Maybe. Inspector Yancey, I have a few questions. What time is it? Just past uh, bathroom time, so you're still good. I think I'll go with Steve Weintraub Collider. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, Steve. Good to see you, man. Nice to see you. Um, I've been a fan of yours for a very long time. I just want to say thank you for making me laugh again and again and again. Oh, too nice, dude. You know, the uh, I, I feel like you you're, you deserve one sucker punch for, if you're going to open like that. <laughs> Sure. I'm not planning on doing any sort of such thing. Um, I, I like. I have a few other questions before I get into Bad Monkey, which sure. is uh, like the entire, entire planet. I love Ted Lasso. I just have to know: uh, Do you think Ted Lasso is over? Do you think there's a chance of a spinoff? Like, what's the status of that? I will tell you this because the the easiest thing for me to say because I can uh, help people manage their time is you know so you know when groupthink sometimes happens even without talking to each other. And every actor, actress, uh, writer, producer on that show, uh, with that, and there's no, there's no like we got together and decided this was the message. We all loved the experience uh, as fans. We'd all kill if it was going again. But everybody will say the same thing: was, uh, yo, whatever Jason feels like doing and whatever his decision is, um, we're all down with it because not only is he the star, he's the head writer, and he's also the 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 dude whose life just has to be completely overhauled and moved to a foreign country with young children. You know what I mean? It's a it's a big deal. So as a fan, if someone's like, "Oh, it's going to happen again," I'll go nuts. Uh, as a partner, um, I'm down for whatever he wants to do. Yeah, it's also possible because a lot of us wonder if it might come to America. You know, like the. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. So. Yeah. With um, I'm also a huge fan of shrinking. And um, so what can you tease about season Hold two? Hold on one second. This doesn't count as your time. Come in and say hi. That's my daughter. Sorry. <laughs> we, 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 actually, we, right, we actually just, we literally just spoke. Like okay, this does not count as your time. I love you. I love you. How's it going? It's going great. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. Okay. Hey, um, find me with that. <laughs> hey, find me with Vince later, kiddo. I love you. That does not count as your time. Please make sure he doesn't get cut off. Cool. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, I am also a really big fan of Shrinking. Uh, what can you tease about season two? And do you still see it as a three-season show? You know, it's interesting. All right, this one I can talk about because uh, 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 it's me. And I find streaming television so interesting. I pitched to Apple a beginning, middle, and end of the story we're telling. Um and the cool thing is you get to do beginning, middles, and ends now in streaming, you know? And uh, so this story that we're telling right now will, because we know how it ends, will definitely end in three seasons. Could it go beyond three seasons? If though, if my partners uh, are open to it and want to, I would I would do it in a second because I, I, I'm truly loving the experience. Um, career highlight, getting to work with, with my wife and Harrison and uh, uh, Jason and Jess, everybody. And, and uh, uh, so... I think it, you know, I haven't figured it out yet, but if Apple said like after the third season story ends, uh, how does this story keep going? They're such great partners. Um, it would be a gift to get to figure that out. Um, stuff I can tease this year. Yeah. You know, um, the, my favorite thing is when I'm doing the shrinking uh, press tour, I'm going to be doing it with Brett Goldstein, you know, and uh, because now he's a co-creator but to get to, uh, without spoiling anything, see him as an actor doing something completely different than I've seen him do before, it's a gift. Um, there's an Easter egg out there that I would tell people to keep their eyes peeled for, because you know me, man, We uh, if I like an actor or actress, I think they're talented and they're also a great hang. They just kind of exist in my world. So I would have people keep their eyes peeled for Meredith Hagner from this show on Shrinking. I don't think that's come out. Um, uh, but uh, uh, look, the uh, I tell everybody the first year um, was about grief and the second year is about forgiveness and the third year is about moving forward. So we knew what the beginning, middle and end was, but I think people are going to dig this year's uh, show. Jumping into why I get to talk to you. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I finished the whole series. I'm going to say congrats. I really, again, hope it's a huge hit for you guys. Um, but I am so curious about working with Vince because the thing about Vince is I'm watching the show and there are so many moments where I really feel like people are legitimately laughing at what he's saying for real. So how much is it him <laughs> taking the script and like making it Vince, like if you will, how much yeah. is it like him saying exactly what's there? Like, because he, he like his delivery is something so unique. Uh, I got to tell you, it, it, I want to, pub him up here for a little bit as an artist. It was a gift, right? Because I, I had apprehension because um, 
you never know how things are going to go. And as a writer, you know, even though I grew up around Vince's comedy and watching him riff in the swingers and wedding crashers and, and old school kills, I can do lines still. You also get nervous. Like, Oh, is he going to come and just uh, start saying whatever he wants to say from the start? So here's the amazing thing. If you're an executive producer and the lead of the show, you set the tone, uh, male or female, young or old people look to you to see how it's going to go on set. And uh, he was, he established one thing right at the beginning. I'm going to do every line as written. Um, and, um, until the showrunners or the director says, I got it. And then I'll go to the actors that I'm in the scene with and go, Hey, let's do a couple takes that we play. Right. And, uh, and then part two of that was, and when I say a couple takes that we play, I don't mean so I can riff and do jokes. I will also set you up, you know, for lines that aren't in the script. Uh, and, uh, uh Meredith Hagner, uh, uh, riffed this line in the pilot, uh, uh, it's, I think it's it's blue, but she says, if you want to cut up, and she says, uh, sweetie, are you aware this is a funeral? Because I can see your vagina. You know what I mean? And so the, 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 these lines come out uh, that you as a writer get to later say, when people say, I really like that, you just go, thank you, even though you had nothing to do with it. But he set this communal tone for whether it was Jody Turner Smith, Rob Delaney, Zach, for people to play around as long as they got the stuff that we had. And when you have that in editing, um, you can pick and choose what you want. And the B side of it, you asked a cool, astute question that not a lot of filmmakers come on both sides of it. I love, I always thought it weird in sitcoms that a character would say something that would make a whole audience laugh and the other characters wouldn't laugh. So for me on my shows, if you look back, I've always said, yo, if somebody says something that makes you laugh, laugh. Don't hold it in. And you, you are without a doubt seeing honest laughs at some of the stuff that Vince said that people didn't suspect. One of the ones that we had to cut away from is in the trailer. It's one of my favorite jokes. And he riffed part of it because he asks uh, the guy next to him, his attorney, he says, uh, on a scale from uh, one to 10, how screwed do you think I am? And the guy says, uh, a million. And he goes, uh, you couldn't just say 10? You didn't think I know 10 was bad? <laughs> and and the, the other actor starts laughing, so we have to cut away really quickly. It's very funny. Yeah, no, I love seeing those kind of moments. Um, I'm almost out of time with you. I have so many fucking things. You get a couple, on. by the way, I talk too much. Please give him uh, uh, an extra few minutes or whatever you can. Go ahead, sorry. Um, so one of the things is that, th first of all, very, that's very nice of you, thank you. But one of the things about the show is that it's a very unique tone. And so it makes it, I would imagine, very interesting in the editing room trying to figure out where you want to deploy, like where it's going to stay serious, where it's going to go off on a unique path. So talk a little bit about, was this a uniquely challenging show in the edit and how did it possibly change as a result? Super hard tone to capture because what I love about Carl's books is that they walk this fine line between caper, pathos, surreal satire and character driven banter comedy. You know, it's what I love about his novels. And what I'm hoping is that people see this as a throwback kind of fun summer movie that would nail those tones. Like uh, if you think of one of Carl's buddies, uh, because they kind of write in the same genre as Elmore Leonard back in the day. And they both, if you look at Jackie Brown or Out of Sight or Get Shorty, all very different movies, but they all walk that line with, between like, is it a silly comedy? But wait, people die and um, um, uh, bad things happen that you're supposed to care about. And what I found amazing is that those three movies are books by the same author, but you would probably say, oh, um, Get Shorty is a very kind of fun slapsticky comedy, but Jackie Brown is a very dark, you, you, you know what I mean? And it's because sure. people chose that tone line of what they wanted to do. I've always liked trying to walk that tightrope between broad, silly comedy and moments of pathos on Scrubs, on Ted Lasso, on Shrinking. And so, yeah, it is really tricky, you know? And um, a lot of times on set, we would try to remind actors and actresses and each other of like, hey, this is a scene that matters. So we can't screw around too much in this one. So hopefully we pulled off because when you fall on the wrong side, those are the those are the moments that don't work. And when you nail it, it's it's cool. And those are the things I liked watching, like Beverly Hills Cop and Midnight Run, you know, and 48 Hours when I was younger. Those are all movies that walked that weird tone, you know? Yeah, well, Midnight Run is also a masterpiece. I, I, it's a I, masterpiece, but people think of it's a silly comedy, but then you no. watch the end and Dennis Farina goes, tonight I'm going to kill your wife and kids, you know, and I'm going to have a nice meal. And you're like, Oh my God, you know, I mean, it's, it doesn't play like a silly comedy, you know? Say, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I'll 
talk probably talk to you for shrinking you know what i mean i really appreciate it and again i want to sincerely say thank you for making me laugh oh back at you for being kind i appreciate it